What's up and welcome back to Rumor Has It Official. Let's get straight into talking about 90 Day Fiance the other way. This is part two of season two, episode 18. And the title of this episode is, Are You Done Yelling? So let's start off with Binyam and Ari. So Binyam is questioning her about why she left and didn't allow the baby to be circumcised. These two are very upset and confused by each other's viewpoints on this situation. I really don't, honestly don't feel like they're ever gonna agree. A lot of the things that he wants to do is based off of his culture and religion, I feel like, especially with the baptism and the baby being circumcised. And her, on the other hand, I feel like she's a new mom. She is emotional, she's hormonal. Um, I mean, these are just facts of what a new mom goes through. She has her own set of beliefs. So I just feel like, I feel like when you're getting to know somebody, you talk about these things. You know, you talk about religion, you talk about background. I mean, I feel like that's what you should be doing. But it seems to me like a lot of these couples are just sleeping around, they get pregnant, and then they later have to face the consequences of those actions. A lot of things they should be discussing and as they're getting to know each other. And these couples aren't doing that. I really want to know your thoughts on Binyam and Ari. Let's move on to Jenny and Samit. So Samit is going to court to finalize his divorce, but he must pay his balance that he owes in full in order to do so. Now, Jenny sits back with her legs crossed and tells him that she won't be going because she never wants to see his in-laws again. She's like, you know, the way they bombarded the house and the way they did this, like, to me, I feel like Jenny is like one of those type of people on social media that are like computer gangsters. You know, they going at it, you know, saying all this stuff to you. But when you face them or when you come at them in person, they're nothing like that. I can guarantee you this air that she puts on, especially like how she talks now about his parents and, you know, they just need to accept it. They just need to give it the program. I bet you, would she say that to their face? I think not. So Jenny just really needs to stop. Yeah, she need to stop. So moving on, on the way to court, Samit tells his friend that his plans after divorce would be to honor his promise to Jenny. My thing is, would Samit be marrying Jenny at this fast pace had he not promised her that he would? Because when he talks and says things, it's like, I have to marry her. I have to marry her because I promise. Like, do you want to marry her? No, I want to marry this woman. You know, she's been by my side. This is a person that I really love. The other woman was an arranged marriage. I did not want to be with her, but this woman I truly love. So I want to marry her as soon as possible. I can't wait to marry her. He's not saying that. He's saying, I have to marry her because I promised her that I would do so. As though because he feels pressured to do so. So I really want to know your thoughts. Do you feel like Samit is marrying Jenny because he truly loves her and wants to be with her? Or do you feel like he does love her, but he wouldn't be marrying her this fast had he not promised? Now in this scene, cameras weren't allowed in the courtroom. So five hours later, Samit FaceTimes Jenny and tells her that the divorce is done. And what really cracked me up is when he FaceTimed her, he's acting all dramatic and like it didn't go through. Cause I'm almost thinking like, the way he was looking, he didn't seem happy. You know, I'm thinking that he's gonna say that they didn't grant him the divorce, but he was granted the divorce. And so he kind of stalled a little bit and like act all sad. And I don't know if the producers or them told him to do that, you know, play it like you didn't get the divorce and then just come out and tell her that you actually did. I don't know, it just seemed weird. I don't know if you all caught on to that as well. Now his father is the one who ended up gathering the funds and he gathered the funds from friends family and from the bank just to bring mental relief to his son that is what the father said do you all feel like his father is responsible to be paying this debt for him i have a huge problem with this and the reason i have a huge problem with it is because cement is more than capable of working a full-time job to pay off the debt. So why is he putting all of that financial burden onto his parents is what I'm trying to figure out. Now, do you all feel like, because this is another perspective, do you all feel like since the dad kind of forced him, when he kept saying he did not want to marry that woman, he forced him. So you feel like the dad is responsible because at the end of the day, the dad gathered the funds from family, from friends and from the bank. But the daddy is telling him, you got to pay me back. I know you know you got to pay me back, right? 
You said you was going to pay me back. So I don't know. Do you all feel like Samit should be paying his father back? Because Samit was forced into that arranged marriage. So do you feel like the dad should be paying it or Samit should be indeed, no matter what, paying his father back? I want to hear your thoughts. Comment down below. And let's move on to Ari and Binyam. So Ari tells Binyam that he pressures her to do things that she doesn't want to. Now, Ari decides to wait outside of the operation room because she didn't want to see or hear the baby in pain. So now they are back at the hospital to try this for the second time uh, to have the baby circumcised. Now, you can tell when they start this procedure because the baby is crying uncontrollably. And she then goes into the operating room and tells Binyam that she will never forgive him for wanting this done to their son. Comment down below your thoughts and let's move on to Yazan. If you guys hear a little bit of rumbling, it's my neighbor. Anytime he starts his truck, you're gonna hear that. So it's like, you think I'm gonna stop my video because I'm waiting on him to get in his car and drive away. So we're just gonna move right along. So Yazan's brother called him to the garage to talk. Now you remember previously in part one, I said that Yazan went to go visit his baby brother and pleaded with the baby brother to talk with the father and convince him to have a meeting with him. So he wants the baby brother to convince their father to have a sit down with him, okay? So his brother tells him that he must go to their father and tell him that he's no longer with Brittany. So this, they feel like the only way is for Yazan to go to his dad and say, her, I'm not with this woman no more, I'm moving on. And that's what's gonna make things better, right? His father has now threatened to kill him and Yazan is still trying to figure out what he should do. But to me, it's a given. If your, fa if your father is threatening you, threatening to kill you, he said, I will be Yazan's murderer. So if your father is threatening to kill you, you think I'm gonna hold on to a relationship that's toxic anyway, where we're not seeing eye to eye, we're not getting along. I would have been like, Brittany, deuces. My life is much more valuable than for me to be risking my life for somebody who I'm in this relationship with that wants me to do all the give and give, 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 but they don't want to compromise on anything. I mean, she thinks just by her moving to Jordan is the biggest compromise or like she's really giving up something. So she's really not giving up anything. And I feel like he is giving up a lot because he's losing a lot, losing his job, losing his family. Now his life is being threatened. So, you know, then you have rumors circling around Jordan. So it wouldn't even be worth it for me if I was him to stay with somebody like that. And the way she talks to him is mad disrespectful. I don't care what nobody say. The way she talks to that man is disrespectful. You know, degrading too. So she doesn't have any respect for anybody. She feels like she is sticking up for herself, but like, it, it's just, it's out of line. It's out of line. I feel like you need to treat people with the same amount of respect as you want them to treat you with. So if you're not willing to do that, then you need to be single. You really do. So Kazan is still desperately trying to keep his relationship and finds it easier to keep pressuring her to convert, which is never going to happen. Since Brittany is on her way back to Jordan, Yazan is pleading with his brother to give him a week maximum to get her here, convince her, to marry him and convert so that he could then take that back to his dad. That's foolish. He'd, he'd be long gone before then. Comment down below your thoughts and let's move on to Jihoon and Devin. So it's hilarious to me when they show Jihoon and Devin because you know that little intro part that they show the couple and so sometimes they'll be happy with each other and then sometimes the intro based on if they had an argument or not, they'll be mad and they'll be crossing their arms with their backs uh, turn towards each other. Well, that little intro part before they get into their scene, it's funny to me seeing Devin with that pink dress on and those pigtails because she keeps reminding me of Wednesday from the Adams Family. <laughs> she reminds me so much of Wednesday and I just, I think it's so hilarious every time I see that. I don't know if I'm the only one that thought that. So in this scene, Devin confronts Jihoon on the naked women that he has in his phone. And to me, I feel like Devin is bringing up legitimate concern. I don't think any woman would be okay with seeing your man looking at another woman naked or having multiple women naked in their in their phone if they are supposed to be married or even in a relationship with you um, in a monogamous relationship. So I think that part is legitimate. 
what I feel like is wrong on her end is bringing up someone's past, something that they've done before they even got to you and using that against them. I feel like you have to give people the benefit of the doubt that they have grown and matured from things of their past. Until they start showing you things in the future and you're present with you, then I can kind of understand. Now, in this case, he is looking at naked photos, but let's try to figure out why is he doing that? Because by, by how his friends were talking, that's something kind of normal. They don't even think anything is wrong with that because when she initially brought up, he started giggling. Like, they don't think anything is wrong with that. Just like some men like having magazines and stuff and looking at that stuff. So um, I don't think that he sees it as that big of a deal, but when those things happen, I feel like you have to sit down and talk about those things and tell him, you know, I don't appreciate that. I think it's very disrespectful for you to be looking at pictures of other women when I'm your woman. So I feel like just having that open line of communication and voicing that and then if things continue, then I can see you may be saying, oh, well, see, you haven't really changed much from your past because you're still kind of doing those same things. During this talk, uh, she gets into, has he ever cheated on anybody in his past before? And he says, yes, that he did. And uh, you could tell things are just starting to shift from here ever since she saw the pictures, but even long before then. Now, Ji Hoon reveals that he uses his hand a lot, okay, in this scene, because Devin isn't satisfying his needs or desires. I feel like Devin is always looking for something and also self-sabotaging her marriage. I don't know. That's just what I feel. Comment down below your thoughts and let's move on to Jenny and Samit. Samit and his father seem to be very happy to have Samit's divorce done. So now that this divorce is done, Samit wants to talk to his father about his relationship with Jenny. He wastes no time to try to slide that on in there. Samit tells his dad that he plans to pay back. He plans to pay him back. And his dad tells him that he has to. Yeah, like you ain't telling me nothing. I don't already know because I already expected that she was going to pay me back. Basically, that was kind of like the vibe. And Samit says that he just started working but can't work full time because Jenny doesn't feel safe. Okay, so because she doesn't feel safe, what are we going to do about that? Are we just not going to get a job? Are we just not going to support our household? Are we just not going to make enough money to pay back? what we owe from family friends and the bank or are we just not going to do that because you're trying to pacify and take care of jenny Samit then slides in that he wants to marry jenny and his dad says he feels bad that Samit wants to marry that lady that's how he addresses jenny as that lady his father tells Samit that they won't accept Samit marrying jenny at any cost they won't allow it Comment down below your thoughts and let's move on to Brittany. So Brittany is finally heading back to Jordan after getting her divorce. And her dad says that he's concerned for his daughter and feels that there are a lot of red flags there. So Brittany is going back, not keeping any of her promises. She no longer plans to bring her father to Jordan like she promised his family. She remember when she was like, next time I come back, I'm going to bring my dad to Jordan. You all can meet him and then we can talk about marriage. She was doing all of that to stall because she was still married. So in this trip, she also reveals that she's gonna be taking her best friend with her to Jordan. So this is gonna be very interesting. Comment down below your thoughts and let's move on to Ari and Binyam. So Ari feels like because she doesn't have control over this situation, that she isn't a good mom. Binyam says that Ari's trust in him is low and that that worries him for the future. Comment down below your thoughts. Let's move on to Jenny and Samit. So Samit goes to his friend in the scene for a job and he's discouraged when his friend says that he can only pay him $100 a week. Listen, right now, uh, I don't know, if he did say he has a part-time job, so he needs to take that part-time job. And then he does need to take, if someone's offering you a job, you don't really have a choice to be picky. You're trying to get money any way you can. So if you got to have two and three jobs, that's just what you got to do because you got to pay your dad back and all the people that he borrowed from. So I just, he's being very picky. He's like, I, I won't be able to do that. But somebody offering you a job, even though it is just $100 a week, you need to take it. You don't have no, he really doesn't have any experience. So like, where do you think you're going to get hired at and get more money than that? 
He need to get him a side hustle selling something. And he needs to keep that part-time job and work for his friend. And also while he's doing that, maybe try to find a better job that's full time and tell Jenny, I'm sorry you scared to be here by yourself. Old girl really needs to um, suck that one up unless he's just gonna suck up her social security check dry. And then what's she gonna do? Hot mess, okay? Comment down below your thoughts and let's move on to Kenny and Armando. Kenny and Armando take all their documents and have hopes for a marriage license, but they're automatically denied. Their protocol is to deny same-sex marriages right away. They're advised to go to the human rights organization and the lady that is helping them with the document says that she'd be more than happy to help them through this process. Kenny is very negative, but Armando seems to be more positive and hopeful. Comment down below your thoughts and let's move on to Brittany. So Brittany is headed back to Jordan and her friend will be meeting her there the day after. Her dad says after the fights that he's overheard, he doesn't see Yazan as the right man for his daughter. Once Brittany gets in the car and is headed to the airport, she starts receiving a whole bunch of texts from Yazan. He says that he got in a car accident and sends her a picture and he blames her for the reason that he got into the car accident. And to be honest, this is the most dumb and petty argument ever. Yazan is frustrated and yelling and Brittany calls him a girl and tells him to shut the bleep up. This is what I mean by the disrespect. He is yelling and he's frustrated but he's I didn't I didn't hear him cussing her out and calling her out her name. Telling him to shut the bleep up. She's disrespectful. She needs to stay her tail right in Florida. I think that's where she's from. She needs to stay there in Florida. I feel as though Yazan is very angry and that's coming off this as a buildup um, because He's doing all of these things to make Brittany happy. But in result of him trying to please her, bad things are happening to him as a result of that. So I feel like he really needs to hang this up and walk away from this relationship and start fresh because this is very toxic. I just feel like it wasn't gonna work from the very beginning. I'm most certain that this show was her idea and not his idea. She wanted to get up here because like I always say, She's using this as a platform to be seen, to get her name out there. And I, I doubt that this is really even about love. <sighs> this is just irritating, okay? Just watching them is very irritating. So I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on 90 Day Fiance The Other Way. This is season two, episode 18, part two. And the title of this episode is, Are You Done Yelling? Comment down below, give this video a big thumbs up. Share this video with a friend who also loves watching 90 Day Fiance the other way. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified on the next time I make an upload. And I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.